We're so glad to see you. This is uh, a great group. I see that there are 47 uh, participants and you get the whole workforce education team here. We're looking forward to your questions and giving you some information about this uh, program funding request. And I will turn it over to Marie Bruin to kick us off. Thank you, Anna, and thanks everyone. Good morning, thank you for attending. Um, great to see your faces out there for those of you who have camera on, um, and it's okay if you don't wanna have camera on, but uh, we are really excited to share this new format with you. This last legislative session, workforce, <coughs> great, great time to cough, but Workforce received over $22 million. I haven't done independent research on this, but I do believe it is the single largest award that we have received for various programs in a single year from the legislature. So that is really impressive. And with that being impressive, it also puts to us a great challenge to be sure to get these resources out to you, get them out to you efficiently, get them out to you timely so that you have them available and can begin to make plans and decisions and structures on your individual campuses. And to do this uh, where we acknowledge uh, where there's greatest need. So today our staff is here to inform you on a new process that we have not undertaken before at the State Board. It is called a program funding request and PFR. We haven't quite settled with the acronym or initialism and how we're gonna use it, but PFR is what you'll hear us use. I wanna say that this too will be a year of a proof of concept. And so as we are trying this new model and launching it, and, and let me say it was no small task to revert and create this model for you. Um, everyone in the workforce team contributed in really great ways to make this happen. But as we do this, we may discover that we need to make some changes along the way, adjustments to make it better for you and better for us, because we need to facilitate this process with efficiency, but integrity as well. So you could see a few changes. Uh, we anticipate to learn from this process, as will you. But here we go. Uh, I want to finish by just acknowledging, again, that staff has done a tremendous amount of work in a very short period of time to do this, to be responsive to, to our system, to our system that has a lot of workload right now and a lot of things in front of you. And we acknowledge absolutely how hard you are working. And we are trying to make this an efficient process that will work well for you. Um, I want to thank you also for being adaptive and uh, re receiving of this new process. I'm so glad to see so many of you here today and, uh, and providing all that you do to the community, superior workforce programs that provide the skills and abilities that industry needs right now and for individuals to get living wage jobs and being able to move forward in their chosen career field. So thank you for that. And with that, I will turn it back over to our staff who are going to walk you through the various aspects of this, solicit your questions, and create a resource that you can refer to as you embark upon the new program funding request. So, Anna, do I kick it back to you? I'll take it. Thank and you. I think, you know, Thank you, Marie. So just, uh, just a few words before we go into each particular funding source, and Marie uh, explained some of it, but we followed these simple guiding principles in developing the funding request model. And we wanted to be able to move the resources to colleges as quickly and efficiently as possible. There's one year uh, for um, these funds to be awarded and used, so we needed to move quickly. We want this, uh, these funds to be easy to administer for the colleges. 
uh, and provide uniformity across funding streams so you don't have to uh, study the particulars of each application. And uh, we needed these resources to be available for program growth development and modification as requested by the legislature. And we are uh, using the work that legislators already have done for us. They've determined that there is a need in the labor market in Washington for these programs to grow. So we're not asking you, the colleges in application, to make a case that it is important for you to grow your nursing or cybersecurity uh, programs. That has already been done through the legislative uh, process. So the legislature indicated that there is a uh, need in uh, growth of cybersecurity and nursing education, and that those are the uh, two fields and three funding streams that we will talk about today. And I'll kick it over to Jim. Hi, I'm Genevieve Howard, uh, one of the policy associates here at uh, the State Board and Workforce. Um, so the funding overview um, specific to cybersecurity, uh, Bill Belden and I are going to be tag teaming <coughs> uh, cybersecurity. Um, and we'll look at the, the survey in, in a second. I want to go through the kind of explain um, what the process is, and then we'll actually look into the survey. But as I said, um, Bill Belden and I are going to tag team this. Uh, so you can send our, your questions to either uh, Bill or myself. Um, but the for cybersecurity specifically, um, the the legislation um, the ledge identified basically 500 cybersecurity FTEs of, of growth growth FTEs. Uh, the program funding request, um, as as Anna indicated, is an expedited data informed funding request process um, that for ease and and and. Uh, speed, we are administering outside the OGMS uh, system. Um, the, the gist of the survey is that the colleges will provide a description of the key elements of the college's plan. Again, as Anna indicated, the, the legislature has already made the case that these are growth areas. And so we are really trying to pare down um, the, the request process. Um, the colleges requesting uh, funding to expand uh, in fiscal year 23, so colleges able to expand their enrollments for next year um, and or build capacity to expand enrollments by fiscal year 25 will be utilizing the same process. Programs that are able to expand their enrollment in next year will be prioritized, prioritized in the funding decisions. Um, but I, I believe that there will be plenty of opportunities for, for colleges uh, for wanting to participate in funds to do so. Um, however, should requests exceed the available resources, allocations will be scaled proportionately according to the size of the, the request and relative amount um, of the resources available. Now, Becky, can you open the, the survey? So the survey is very, and, and the survey for cybersecurity and nursing are going to look very familiar or very similar. Um, and, and same with the, uh, the simulation lab equipment. It's the, the, the top component is basic general college information. Who are you? What college? How can we get a hold of you? If you can scroll down. <clears throat> Program information. Um, and for for the cybersecurity, we recognize that uh, not all um, it there you may have more than one program that would qualify for cybersecurity FTEs. We would ask that you would fill out a survey one for each program. Um, so the title of the program, credentials, um, some very basic information about your program, uh, current capacity um, or current enrollment and, and uh, projected capacity. And then go ahead and scroll down. And programs can be credit or non-credit. 
Um, we really wanted to kind of think outside the box to see how we can we can get these credit or these, as I say, not credit or non credit, um, how we can get these FTEs out the door. So then go ahead and scroll down. Projected FTE increase, specifically for cybersecurity, the per FTE amount is $9,000 uh, per FTE. So if you simply just put your, um, the FTE that you project your uh, the growth by, then we can do the math. So there is, is not even a budget component to this. We're asking uh, what year you will be able to produce those FTEs. If it's fiscal year 22-23, uh, um, then you can mark that. If, if you don't anticipate having growth until the year after or the year after that, just please let, let us know that. Um, and then go ahead and scroll down. Projective, uh, project objectives and project timeline. These are, there's a max of 2000 character limit. We just, we want to know in, in the most straightforward way, what are your plans to grow your cybersecurity FTEs? Um, again, the case has already been made as why this is a growth area. We just want to know what specifically you will be doing with these funds and, um, and obviously a timeline for, um, for expansion. And then that's it, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, Becky, do you want to go to the next slide? Thank you. So I am seeing quite a few questions rolling through the chat. We will respond to all the questions, but most of them we'll have to take back and respond to in writing. This is a new process for us, so we don't want to hastily give you responses. Uh, we'll uh, need time to take these questions back, discuss, and provide you uh, with answers so that everyone receives uh, consistent information. So uh, if we're not answering to your questions in real time, you know, be sure, uh, you know, know that we're not ignoring them, we're documenting them, and uh, we will post a Q&A document on the SBCDC website and you will get all your answers. So for the nursing enrollments request, um, as Genevieve said, it will be very similar to cybersecurity. We have uh, about $2.1 million to award to the whole system to increase enrollments. There's some distinctions between this funding and cybersecurity, aside from, of course, the, um, the field itself. But um, we are tasked as a system over three years to add about 200 nursing slots. But the legislature also prescribed a level of uh, funding for those colleges that are uh, projecting to increase their enrollments but by at least 25 FTE. And that is $300,000. So those colleges that propose to increase by 25 or more are guaranteed at least $300,000 of funding. So um, we will make a determination on what that FTE value is after we receive all of the requests and are able to give priority funding to those who are able to grow by 25 or more in the next academic year. That's uh, another important factor that I didn't mention right away. So if uh, we go to the form, Becky, please. Um, we are, for the purposes of this application, a nursing FTE is a nursing FTE. We're not making a big distinction between whether that FTE is going to be in the LPN, ADN, or BSN program, but we still would like to know uh, which programs you intend to make this investment into. So uh, please indicate which program or programs you will be uh, expanding. Let's scroll down. But here, you know, you, you may, you know, you will give us your capacity of your nursing programs, regardless of the, of the level uh, and the degree provided. What is your current enrollments? Um, FTEs, headcounts, capacity, um, your wait list. 
um, please scroll. And by how many FTEs do you intend to grow your program? Your, um, the preference will be given to requests uh, that are proposing to increase FTEs by 25 or more in the next academic year. And those proposals will receive a minimum of $300,000. Uh, amount of awards for increases below 25 will be determined after priority awards have been made. So as with cybersecurity, there's, uh, we're allowing uh, kind of capacity building in the first years of this funding availability. So you may not be able to increase enrollments by a significant number in the first or even second year and would only be able to achieve that growth in fiscal year 24-25. Let us know when do you expect to add that cohort or to expand uh, your existing cohorts. Um, again, we'll need to know that in how we assign priority to funding. And please provide a narrative for how do you intend to accomplish these tasks. And the way that I'm thinking of these um, the project objectives and timeline um, narratives is we will be asked the question by the Workforce Education Investment uh, Board and by uh, the legislature, what are you doing with this money? So, you know, kind of provide us with, an, you know, with information that will enable uh, us to answer that question. What, how do you intend to spend it? Um, and that is, uh, that is it for the form, just one, one screen worth. And the next funding source is the healthcare simulation labs. This is a bit different from the FTE funding. And um, we have about $8 million to award to the system. And some of the funding we anticipate to be ongoing and some we anticipate to, um, to not continue in the, we, you know, we don't know, but uh, we don't anticipate that it will continue into the next uh, biennium. So that's why the funding is uh, split into what we're calling a base plus um, allocation model. So the amount of funds that the colleges will receive will be based on interest and the self-assessed level of need. Uh, Depending on colleges have an opportunity to, to opt in or out of uh, of this funding. So if you are opting in, let's let's just go to the to the form that will be. So again, we are asking what programs you'll support, and then the first drop down right here is your college interested in receiving base simulation equipment funding. So we anticipate that the ongoing funding. Uh, is about 1.6 million total for the system. So depending on how many programs declare interest in receiving this base funding, we will split this 1.6 million into as many programs. So the funding levels will vary based on uh, interest. And then you will indicate whether you're also interested in receiving one time plus equipment funding. So you will say yes or no. And then you will provide us uh, with your self-assessment of need, uh, which is um, you know, none, low, medium, or high, depending on the level of interest um, and the self-assessed need, we will determine the amount of funding that colleges will receive. But we also do want you to uh, explain to us how did you arrive at this assessment. Again, we do not need an analysis of the labor market for, uh, for nurses at this time. We just need for your specific programs. What conversations did you have to come up with that we really have a high need for this additional funding? Um, you know, so you will tell us how you arrived at this uh, assessment and how you intend to use the funds. What type of equipment, what kind of upgrades are you planning on um, investing in? So again, only two, uh, two areas for the narrative here. All right. And that's your three applications.
Okay, good morning, everybody. Um, so I'm just going to cover a few of the details. Um, the applications are due June 16th. We just want to make sure that everybody's clearly aware of that deadline. A couple of notes from our uh, fiscal team is that uh, we are very, um, we, we don't have the same uh, program guidelines and fiscal guidelines that we typically publish when we are doing uh, grant funding. So uh, we're just trying to make sure everybody remembers that all of the funding must be used under the um, guidelines that are currently exist and how they were intended by the legislature and that um, allocations are for one year and those funds expire on June 30th of 2023. And that I do see some questions in the chat about um, will this PowerPoint uh, be available? And yes, it'll be available online. We'll publish this PowerPoint as well as the questions and answers that come up from this uh, conversation. The other piece that we have here is the links to the assurances, which are available on our funding page. And the insurance, the assurances are really detailed, and it's because we don't have the traditional guidelines, uh, the program and fiscal guidelines. So we wanted to make sure we covered all of the same information under the assurances that we typically cover through other sources. And as Marie said uh, at the beginning of this, this is a new process for us, and we will be looking at ways to improve it as we go forward. Uh, but this is the uh, process by which we deemed would best meet the needs of the system and our ability to process these awards in the fastest manner. And that's it. So if I may take a stab at answering some of the questions, the easy ones in chat. Um, Joyce asked um, uh, if, uh, and I see Carolyn started answering, um, is the funding response in narrative form or should a spreadsheet be included? The, uh, you, we're just asking for you to fill out uh, survey monkey survey and we will um, gather those answers um, in one place. So there's, you are not submitting any attachments other than um, assurances document. So no additional spreadsheets. Um, I also saw a question regarding um, from Kyra, I believe, about whether it's 25 FTE or 25% uh, of current capacity, and it is the former. It is uh, 25 FTE, regardless of what percent of current capacity it is. This is Carolyn McKinnon. Hi, everybody. I am recording all of your questions. And what I would like to request is if Becky, if you could please, um, while I'm speaking, navigate us to the FY23 program funding request webpage. What I would like to do, folks, is show you, we will be making a comprehensive question and answer document. It will be a living document. We will continuously update it with what your new questions and our answers um, throughout the next couple of weeks up until the day before your due date. And so you see where additional funding details is highlighted here at the bottom of this web page. This is where you should expect to find the recording of this webinar, the slides that have been presented today, and that Q&A document. I encourage you to visit this website frequently if you're if you're going through the request process over the next two weeks. Visit this web page so that you can grab the Q&A um, and see if it's updated. New questions will be posted to the top of that Q&A page so that you can see the new stuff first. Thank you.
I would also like to respond to Lauren Klein's um, question about uh, if prior approvals from nursing commission, clinical placements, national accreditation are necessary at the time of application. And the answer is no, you may spend some of this funding to, uh, to do precisely that, to seek those, um, those approvals for um, uh, additional clinical placements, developing those clinical placements. So because capacity development is allowed, we're not asking for you at the time of the application to have um, this, uh, you know, a fully developed um, proposal for the expansion. And yes, you can, uh, uh, in response to, uh, to Kara, uh, you can do multiple program expansion in one proposal. We need to know the overall um, FTE growth. And um, maybe I mentioned it, maybe I just thought it, but you know, the legislature did not um, limit us to what type of uh, nursing uh, expansion, whether it's uh, licensed practical nursing, associate degree in nursing, or baccalaureate uh, level nursing, you know, we should invest in. So uh, all three levels qualify for this funding. I'm seeing several questions that are related to limitations on the funding. Maybe we can provide some brief information on that. I'll start with this one. This is from Brandon. I'm curious on the budget limitations for FTE expansion specifically. Is it the idea primarily to pay instructors to open more sections or can we use it to pay for recruitment and retention efforts or direct student aid? So maybe some, some brief explanation about what funding can be used for. So generally, I, you know, for in terms of uses of funds, I do want to, um, you know, have the opportunity before we respond, you know, to, to make sure that we have conversations with our fiscal uh, staff and provide those um, those in writing. Um, but I will say that, um, at least for nursing, um, the funding is rather flexible. It is not prescriptive as to how you spend it as long as you can uh, show us that it is tied to expansion. I do also want to mention that there's additional financial aid available for healthcare um, occupations in this uh, legislative budget. So for uh, when colleges are planning uh, their budgets, you know, please consider the um, opportunity grant uh, expansion for healthcare occupations. I think we may be able to answer this question. What happens if you don't meet the goal of growth? Do we have to have confirmed clinical slots or can part of the grant proposal could be to seek those? You are able to use this funding to seek those. Thank you, folks who have been submitting questions in the chat. Just also want to acknowledge that if you are unable to submit your questions in chat, um, you may use the raise hand function or unmute to ask your questions verbally now. Thanks for raising your hand, Lauren. Go ahead. So um, 
there's a couple of two questions. Does this include the mobile funding for the SIM mobile units within the 8 million? Because I believe there was an allocation of about $800,000 for those. So I just didn't know if those were in this allocation or not, or that's completely separate. And then there's also actually, oh, I'm sorry, Lauren. That's okay, go ahead. So actually the SIM, uh, the mobile labs were included in the allocation with FTE funding and not with SimLab, so, so um, counterintuitive, but uh, so, so the, we will develop a process for awarding the, the uh, mobile SIM at a later date. And right now, you know, so we took the 800,000 times two out of the allocation, you know, that included those and the amounts were prescribed. Um, so the 2.1 million for FTEs already accounts for the um, 1.6 for simulator vans being taken out. Okay. So, and the 8 million is, um, will all be distributed uh, campus by campus. The vans will be separate. Okay, the vans are separate. Mm -hmm. The other question I have, there's quite a few about the nursing assistant. So we've had pathways for nursing assistant and other allied health areas. Are those also increased for FTE allocation? Um, we will have to respond to that one in writing. At, the, at this time, um, it is LPN, BSN, and ADN that are, um, that are focus of these funds. Is RN to BSN okay? Then, or yeah. Let me see if I can summarize this one. It's just reflects are we expecting a specific size of growth based on small college or large college, or can people ask for anything? One FTE or more? You can ask for any number of FTEs that is appropriate for your college. So the healthcare simulation is for nursing, the, the way that proviso reads is it's for nursing programs to purchase or upgrade uh, simulation equipment. So the proviso is very clear on, you know, the primary user, it does not prohibit other programs from using that, uh, that equipment, but it is the uh, nursing programs that are the primary applicants. Are we looking for consortium projects or single colleges? I think that's one we need to discuss. Okay. I see one that we can address. Tiffany just asked uh, whether funding, the nurse FTE funding is open to four-year colleges or universities, public or private, or is it only for community and technical colleges? So I'm happy to respond to that. Um, this is just the CDCs. However, there is funding um, that is it's not FTE funding, but the, the simulation um, equipment funding that also is going to the four years and, uh, and K-12 schools. So the legislature made those investments in other sectors as well. 
Um, I am not sure about the FTE. There may be additional investment into four years um, uh, that, that went directly to them. But the funding that we are discussing right now is uh, um, only for the CDCs. So Kyra, I think you know, your, your question, if you have a current program or planning on opening a different track, can this be used for both? And yes, it can. And uh, you can, you can um, determine that you, know, you are able to increase uh, FTEs in your current program quickly and then use funding for capacity development in, in a different one. Uh, it is up to the colleges. I see Brandon asked another question that I think that we can answer. If awarded, will the funding be available immediately July 1 or later in the fiscal year? I don't know if we want to ask Marie to chime in on that. On the availability of funds. Yeah. So the intent is to, if we're able to make it through this process and get awards, uh, the intent is to get them out to you as close to July 1 as we possibly can. This process must occur first and then they will go out through one of our allocations. I don't believe we will be complete with the process in time to be in your very first allocation but we do hope that it will come very shortly thereafter. So that is... Uh, Marie, this is, is Denise. I can pop in if you Thank want. Thank you, Denise. Yeah. <laughs> so um, what you said is exactly correct. Um, we'll, we will roll it out in the applicant the allocation that follows the initial, um, it, won't, it will not be available in the initial allocation that starts July 1st. And I do not have an exact date of when the second allocation will be released, but that's where it would be. And I guess as a follow-up, that's a confirmation that these will come as allocations and we should let our budget office know rather than as a specific grant as we typically see through OGMI, OGMS and OPIS, right? That is correct, Brandon. And each one will have a description line indicating which source of funds that uh, is there, but they are short descriptive lines. So uh, watch for those. We will stay consistent with the, the title of the fund. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Looks like Joseph Cower's question is a little complicated. So I want to see if we can get some clarity on that uh, before we leave that hanging. I'm gonna read the question and, and then we'll see what we can do with that. My cybersecurity program is already overloaded, usually 10 FTE overload. That means uh, planned number of students and extra 10 students in the, in the course are allowed. And I expect that that trend to, oops, got some more in there. I expect that trend to continue for future fiscal years since it stays at a pretty high FTE amount how would I show growth when it is just me and the program? And so this is, I think, about how do we measure growth from current level for your expansion with this funding? Is that what you're looking for, Joseph? That is correct. Joseph, I'll offer that, that this is a question we'll probably have to get back to you. Uh, overloading your courses, if, if that's, if I'm understanding you correctly, those FTEs are being captured and are in your current measurements. And so it may be something you want to address in the narrative, 
but uh, let us get back to you on how you would show growth beyond this over enrollment environment that you're in and how best to articulate that. Would that be all right? Yes, that would be lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So Joyce, you were asking if there are any, um, if there are conversations around these funds, um, if they're complementing discussions with the nursing commission on easing in-person clinical requirements versus uh, simulation. So yes, um, the nursing commission, last time I checked, they did not yet have the process developed, but they did receive about $3 million to, for incentives uh, for nurses to, to act in an instructor role at clinical sites. They're working on um, operationalizing those funds. Um, and, um, you know, we'll of course share, you know, what they decide, you know, hopefully shortly. Um, I will defer to Marie maybe to say a few words about the, um, the clinical, where we are with conversations on clinical requirements uh, in person versus simulation. But yes, those conversations are also happening with our leadership. Joyce, thank you for the question. And of course, that ratio of uh, in-person time versus sim time is very important to our ability to be able to expand enrollments and to not be so dependent upon in-person clinical environments and to utilize these investments in simulation equipment. So uh, those conversations are continuing. We of course will be deeply reliant on colleges to help inform that and we are proceeding with working with WASAC and the Nursing Commission and others to uh, uh, inform, best inform, uh, that we should continue some of those practices that were uh, allowed during, uh, during COVID and that uh, to continue with some of those. And we, uh, of course, will be reaching out to colleges for that support as well to make permanent policy changes. Um, of course, it hasn't been done yet, but uh, we are proceeding in that direction. Thanks for the question. I recognize a question from Mike Potter hasn't been answered. It looks like that's probably one that we'll have to follow up on. It's specific to whether or not funds can be used for capital projects like room renovation. So we've described this as pretty flexible, but we'll wanna make sure that that's possible. We will, we will respond to that in writing. I'll acknowledge Mike Potter's uh, response to of uh, thanks for reformatting how we how we are putting out workforce money. Mike, thank you for that acknowledgement, and uh, thank you everyone for your contributions and in informing us along the way, which was a significant guidepost to our staff in how to do this. And uh, again, I just want to acknowledge and applaud our workforce staff for really turning this around in a very short period of time in order to be most responsive to your workloads and trying to do this as, as quickly as we possibly can. So thanks go all around.
All right, well, continue, please continue sending in your questions the you know, send the nursing, um, education enrollments and healthcare simulation labs uh, directly to me on the Nikolaeva. My um, email is on the SBCDC site, but it's also first initial last name at sbcdc.edu. Uh, questions for cybersecurity go to Genevieve or uh, Bill Belden. Uh, same pattern for emails, first initial last name at SBCDC. Um, all the questions and answers to them, even when sent directly to us, will be shared publicly. Thank you, and thank you for helping us, you know, build build this plane as we're we're flying it. You've given us uh, a lot to think about and a lot to discuss in your questions. And uh, um, thank you for um, for your thoughtful uh, thoughtful uh, questions. Anna, just really quickly, I don't want to be remiss and not also thank our fiscal staff, which is standing here with us today and is such an integral part in our being able to do any of this. So uh, Denise and Susan and Carrie and others that are out there today, thank you so much for standing with us as we launch this new process. All righty. And Thank with that, everybody. we will, oh, sorry, go ahead, Marie. <laughs> Please go ahead, Becky. I was just going to say, and with that, I think we'll conclude the meeting and stop the recording. And Thanks, we will everyone. go and work on the answers to your questions. Thank you all.